Total Screen proudly presents the Weekly Set Podcast with Tyson Gifford and William Rorick. Episode 234, recorded December 9th, 2019. Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Weekly Set, the official podcast of the Total Screen. I am your host. My name is Tyson, and joining me today, as always, is my partner in crime here at the Total Screen, William Robert. Hello. So today, we are going to be talking about Mr. Robot. In fact, we're going to be talking so much about Mr. Robot that we're going to be covering two full episodes of Mr. Robot. We're going to be talking about episode 409, Conflict, and episode 410, Gone. These are the episodes that are ending the current nomenclature, which is the air message uh, episode titles. After that, it's going to change to something else. But we're talking about the last two with the current nomenclature. Conflict and Gone, very different episodes. Yes. I'd say Gone in particular just feels completely foreign to typical Mr. Robot, you know? It really is. It's really, <laughs> it, it, it's interesting. But we'll start with Conflict, which is, it's funny because Conflict is like quintessential Mr. Robot. It's it's like, this is, if, if you wanted to like, you know, point out, point at somebody and say, this is Mr. Robot. This is Mr. Robot. This is that's, that's Conflict. It kind of represents exactly what Mr. Robot is. So yeah, Conflict starts with Mr. Robot himself, the titular character, Christian Slater's character, visiting Elliot's Mind Palace. I'm just going to call it his Mind Palace for lack of a better term. Because <laughs> it's, the, it's the place inside his head where all his thoughts congregate, I guess. And he goes there and he talks to Kidiot and Mommyet, as I dubbed them. <laughs> Kid Elliot and his mom, basically. And what's interesting here is that they're talking again about, you know, the third personality, which seems to be, I guess, the real Elliot, it seems to be what they're saying. I have no clue. The, like, it, like I don't know. It's, it's, it's super vague what they're talking about because they're just, they're just talking in vague terms. Like, well, they're talking about Elliot as Elliot and, and, and she, and, uh, Elliot's mom inside of his head, I guess, is, is, is telling, uh, Mr. Robot, you know, it's time, it, I think it's time to let Elliot know. And Mr. Robot's like, no, it's not time yet. He needs to finish the hack first. And, they're being like really super vague about it, and I, I was like, oh, I, th- I really thought this was the episode where they're going to reveal it, but nope, they're going to hold off on that just longer. Apparently, it did seem to put a nail finally in the whole, you know, the theory about the uh, Mister Robot with the hat. It did. It did seem to do that. So I'm curious to see what it ends up being. Uh, at this point, I don't think we're going to see it until the series finale. Because we, we are just spoilers now for the kid. We don't, it's not revealed in the next episode either. So, <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's not revealed in any of the episodes we're talking about tonight. So we only have like one episode left and then the two hour series finale, which splits into two episodes for purposes of the show. So, yeah, they, three, I, three hours after what we're discussing tonight, basically. So I, I, I feel like, I feel like it's not going to come out until the finale at this point. Well, it could. It it, it kind of depends on what the climax of the story is. Is the climax of the story going to be next week's episode, or is it going to be within the finale? Right. It's a series right. finale, so sometimes the series finale is almost all epilogue, you know, on some shows. Some shows. Yeah. We see what it ends up being on Mr. Robot. But for right now... Mr. Robot is talking to, as we said, the kid version of Elliot and Elliot's mom. And as we said, they, uh, they're not saying exactly who this other personality is, but there's a few like little hints where like the mom says something about, Oh, I'm never going to see my sweet little boy again. And then there's one point where Mr. Robot says to her that like, Darlene was able to talk to him. He had surfaced on his own at some point. Darlene was able to kind of bring him out or something. That's why I think that this this other personality might actually be kind of like the real Elliot, I guess. That's what things seem to be leaning towards, at least. Yes. The one other interesting thing that happened in this scene is that when Mr. Robot had talked about telling when he was going to tell Elliot the truth, he used a phrase something along the lines of, and that's when we'll tell Elliot what he's done. Which is interesting. So, is this telling the other personality that we haven't met what the Elliot that we have met has done through the course of the show, meaning like the 5-9 hack and all this other stuff? Or does this mean that there's something that Elliot has done that we don't know about, that we're going to learn about? Right. 
It seems to be one or the other. <laughs> it seems to be one or the other. Yeah, I guess we'll find out sooner or later. Next scene, we have Mr. Robot has taken over for Elliot. Elliot, we saw last week, was saying, like, basically that he couldn't he couldn't go through with the, the hack, the last hack against White Rose. So Mr. Robot's kind of taking over for him. This kind of alarms Darlene once she realizes it. A few things that he says, I think he calls her kiddo at one point or something like that, makes her, like, go, wait a minute. Yeah, she You're not Elliot, realizes, you're Mr. Robot. What the hell are you doing here? You're right. She quickly realizes she's talking to Mr. Robot. And she's, she's a little alarmed by it. She's like, what's going on here? What are you doing here? Why, why, what's going on with Elliot? And he's like, I, he's like, I can't say it. It's his story to tell. It's his, he, it's for him to tell you when the right time comes. Darlene's like, she obviously wants to push him more, but they're on like a deadline. They, they got stuff going on. And around this time is when Philip Price shows up and he, uh, he visits F Society, what's left of it. <laughs> and he, uh, gives Mr. Robot a thumb drive. Basically says that I want you to do a favor in addition to this hack. I want you to destroy White Rose's machine. And it's like, well, why would I do that? Or Mr. Robot's like, why would I do that? And he said, because it's Angela's like last wish. If you remember, like at the beginning of the season, right before Angela was snuffed out, mm -hmm. she was saying like, like we should destroy it. We should, you know, destroy everything of hers and stuff. So taking the money is part of that, but the, the bigger part is the machine, which is the whole thing that she herself had been kind of confused by and been manipulated to believe was going to be like changing the past and all this other bullshit. So she wanted to destroy it, uh, and, and Price has all the information on that thumb drive, gives it to Mr. Robot so that he can destroy it after the hack and everything's done. This right. leaves Darlene confused because she's like, what the fuck does Price have to do with Angela? Because we know about Price and Angela's relationship. Right, Darlene Elliot knows about. about Price and Angela's relationship. Darlene does not, apparently. She is, apparently she is in the dark. And she remains in the dark because they just kind of, uh, we don't have time for this. Move on, move on. Poor Darlene. She's just always in the dark about everything. <laughs> she is. All she the important conversations involved. happen inside Elliot's head. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> So this leads to Price going to meet White Rose, and he quickly realizes it's just White Rose and a bunch of Dark Army people. Deus Group's not there, except for the two of them. So they end up sitting down. It's, like, beautifully shot. Like, everything in Mr. Robot's beautifully shot, but, like, the, the way they handle, like, geometry in particular, you know, like the geometric shapes on the floor and everything is gorgeous in this show and uh they they're having conversation with white rose basically just wanting philip price to admit what he's done and then like yeah because you can philip have an price easy death goes <laughs> to the meeting and it's not the real meeting like yeah. uh white rose has moved has told everybody else to go to a new location and so this is basically a trap trap for uh yeah it's basically a trap yeah, and so he he wants to get Price to basically confess what he did and then, you know, take the option for the painless death. Right. Like, it's not about, like, confronting him and, like, you know, if you tell me what I need to know, you know, you can live. It's like, you tell me what I need to know and you can die in a more easy fashion. Meanwhile, Darlene and Mr. Robot are trying to to do the uh, the hack to, to get all the, the information of all the members of the Deus group and get their logins to their bank account so they can steal their money. They're trying to do this while Philip Price is meeting with White Rose. And Philip Price, for his part, is doing a, a damn good job of basically just stalling for time. Yeah, for stalling for time. And having a kind of a fun time at it, too. He's, he's able to take a few pot shots at White Rose and <laughs> <laughs> throughout their encounter, basically able to kind of like just watch him and look at him with, with knowledge that White Rose doesn't have and uh, kind of, you know, snigger it in his own mind at White Rose, which is kind of fun to watch uh, Philip Price and, perform and, that way. And, yeah. And it's also fun because we see, we see a Philip Price who, who don't, who doesn't give any shits now because he knows, he knows that no matter what happens, he's not getting out of there alive at this point. Yeah. He, he just doesn't care. And he just doesn't care. Yeah. He's not begging for his life. You know, he's, he's just like, <laughs> how long can I keep, how, how long can I keep the insulting of White Rose going until he finally kills me? Until, yeah, exactly. <laughs> that's the game. That's the game that Philip Price is playing right now and meanwhile they get they gotta do the hack so darlene has to get to where everybody 
from the dais group actually is, get within range of them. We should uh, say that there's a great shot inside the building where you see, like, the dais group. Did you notice Donald Trump? Uh, no, I didn't. <laughs> there is a figure that you see from behind that is very clearly Donald Trump. The very Trumpian. <laughs> they they did the hair, you know, you could see the hair. It looked exactly like it, you know? <laughs> So Trump is part of the dais group in the story, apparently. Apparently. But yeah, so Darlene goes to where she, they, they find where the actual dais group meeting is and she can't really get in. So she's trying to, um, like find a way to, to get as much, uh, uh, cell phone information as she can to, th- that they can get the, the bank accounts for everybody in the dais group. Elliot ends up like jamming the, the parking so they can't get out of the parking and, Darlene makes a video as a way to lure out members of the dais group to get out of the building, not being able to completely leave, but to get out far enough that they can get their, um, they can sniff the phone numbers or that, the account numbers from their phones. Because if, if, if she posts a video basically threatening the dais group, gets a bunch of people down there that brings the dais group people out and, and they, they're getting on their phones. They're opening up their phones, making sure they're on. And that's allowing her access to them, uh, with their data sniffer so that they can get their account information. Nice. So this is classic Mr. Robot. Lots of, uh, you know, the code typing intensifies. Yeah, code typing <laughs> intensifies. <laughs> <laughs> So while this is happening, before Darlene makes the video, Mr. Robot ends up making a call. I think he's trying to call Price, and he gets in touch with White Rose. And he's talking to White Rose, and White Rose starts going into the whole scam thing about, like, Angela's still alive. You should know this, you know? And it immediately cuts back, and you see Elliot. It's no longer Mr. Robot, it's Elliot. Elliot takes over the moment White Rose mentioned Angela. Yeah, the moment White Rose mentions Angela. This is basically White Rose's desperation appeal to try to get Elliot, to get Elliot on her side. Uh, that's basically White Rose's desperation appeal. Yeah, and and she's like, you know, we don't we don't have to be enemies. We can be on the same side. You know, you can have all this. These things work out. And Elliot just kind of looks like he might be taken in by it. Even Philip Price, like overhearing it, looks like he might be taken in by it for a second there. And then there's a certain point where where White Rose says something along the lines of like, let me help you or something. And Elliot says, well, that's the thing. You're the one that needs the help. And then this is when, you know, White Rose becomes alerted to everything that's going on with the video at this point that that was used to lure out Deus Group. And so he's freaking out. He's angry. He's off the phone with Elliot at this point. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because, because Elliot makes, makes it clear to White Rose, you know, that he is not, he's going to take her down. He's not going to join her. Yes. And so the information being put out about the Deus Group and where they are, Elliot's doxed him now. Right. And so he he's I mean, he even says he's like he says to Philip Price he's all you really think I can be taken out by a dox and Philip Price is like he's all I honestly don't know I'm just as curious as you are <laughs> Price is great in this because he's just very calmly talking shit <laughs> the whole time. At this point, White Rose's assistant is, like, freaking out. She's like, we need to get out of here. You've lost. You've lost. This is it. And when White Rose refuses to give up on it, she takes off. So now he's lost his assistant. Of course, Philip Price has something to say about that, too. Just rubs in everything. Oh, yeah. He rubs everything in. He, <laughs> Every he micro loss White Rose takes is being mocked by he doesn't. Price. He doesn't waste an opportunity. Yeah. Yeah. So on the outside, Darlene is able to get all of these, um, all of the accounts and verify all of them for the Deus group. And so in doing so, including White Rose, they, they take all of their money. And this, this is the, this, this is it. The, the hack is done. With that done, that, you know, Deus group is able to finally get away. They get out of the building. They're like rushing out of there and slowly starting to find out that all their money is gone. The last we see finding out that all of his money is gone is White Rose. White Rose is talking shit to Price as they're like going down the stairs, like to go into the car and send Philip Price to his eventual death. Price is like refusing to move. He's like, he's like, oh, it's it's nice and quiet out here, isn't it? And White Rose is like, you really gonna make me force you into the car? <laughs> yeah, yeah. At this point, like White Rose is pissed. 
Price is kind of like laughing and, and all of a sudden all these alerts are going off on his phone and stuff. And he's like, what's this? And Cat Price is like, off. well, if it's what I think it is, we're all broke. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So White Rose checks, and just as she checks, all of her, it just shows all of her accounts empty. Yes. So White Rose, you know, like like Phillips mocking her some more about it, and just kind of walking down the stairs, not caring. White Rose actually grabs a gun from one of the Dark Army soldiers she has next to her, and just murders Price. Just, yeah, just kills him. And then they get in the car and they take off. And White Rose, the last thing she sees as they take off is is Elliot with his be- just his back, like you know, yeah. his his silhouette of him in his hoodie. Just just taken off from where he was doing the yeah. hack. <laughs> and then, you know, that that could be the final scene of the episode, except we have one more. White Rose is in her apartment or building or whatever, and we hear the authorities outside telling her to open up, and she's just, you know, she's, she's in her female her attire, putting on her makeup, and just sitting there calmly, calmly putting on her lipstick as you just hear gunfire and stuff. I kind of referred to this as her Scarface moment. Her Scarface moment. Yeah. She's not coming out with a gun, but it's the whole thing. Like, you know, guns are blazed and they're coming out and it's her last moment of glory. And instead of going out in a blaze of glory with gunfire for her, her last moment of glory is to be dressed up. Right, right. And so, yeah, that's the last we see of White Rose. So far. And the last we see of this episode. Yeah, that's the end of the episode, yeah. <laughs> so the next episode, 410, gone. Gone. This, this one begins... is exclusively about Darlene and Dom. There's other characters in it, but it's mainly the stories just... Well, the story on. is... A, yeah, sorry, there's other characters, but it, it, the story is about Darlene and Dom. It's not about the other characters. I think this might be the only episode of Mr. Robot that doesn't have Mr. Robot in it. That Yeah. Yeah, I I would have to go back and watch the series to make sure, but yeah, this I'll have to this go is... back and double check. But I don't think he's in this episode at all. Anywhere. No, he no, he's not in this episode. No, I I won't. Yeah. I, I would I would have to double check your claim that this is the only episode without Mister Robot in it. But it sounds right. <laughs> it sounds right. So yeah. we'll just roll with it. Uh, but yeah, no, this is like I said, no Mister Robot. Elliot is. You can there. even say Mister Robot is gone. <laughs> uh, Elliot is there for like the first five minutes. In fact, Elliot just like takes off, and then it's all not about... even the first five minutes. He's just kind of somewhere like in the maybe the first act yeah. for about a minute or two. <laughs> he takes off. He has something to do. We don't. Well, we, we should don't... say where this episode starts. This episode starts in the hospital. Darlene in the hospital. No, not Darlene. Dom. Dom in the hospital. Yeah. So now we know she's she's alive. She survived her surgery. She's on the mend, but she's not. She's not a uh, cleared by the FBI. She can't even talk to her own family. Right. Her her own family are off limits to her, so she can't even do that, which is like kind of bullshit. But <laughs> as she as she exclaims, she's like, "You don't even trust me to talk to my own family." And he's like, "No, uh, this is one of the, an FBI agent that's there with her in the hospital." She is paranoid. Like you know, a nurse comes and is setting her up with a saline drip, and she's like, "No, uh, no, 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 <laughs> no! You're not plugging anything into me. What's what's this for? I don't need this." Right. Because obviously, it's like, what what would you? think if you were in her position well somebody's oh, yeah. gonna come to the hospital to fucking murder me well, well yeah well she's thinking the uh, dark army's coming to finish the job yeah so Which she's just I not trusting too. anyone yeah she's paranoid she she can't get cleared to there. She she can leave though because she's she can just check herself out against doctor's orders. Yeah, and that's what she decides to do. But not before she witnesses everything that happened with the Deus event on a TV news report. Right. And she makes the connection that she actually saw White Rose showing her her dresses, and yes. she says like she was showing me who she was. And, and the FBI so she, agent talking to her is like, what do you say? And she's like, oh, nothing. Yeah, so it, it's just kind of like a little interesting moment there. But then she, she goes to take off, of course, hospital procedures. You know, you have to go out in a wheelchair, and then you have to have somebody because she was on a... Um, I think it's uh, because she was she was on certain medications. She had to be she had to have somebody check her out, go with her. She couldn't just leave on her own. So this is like this kind of reminded me of uh, the episode of Breaking Bad where where Jesse had been beaten up and he was in the hospital. Yeah, and he is like just sitting outside. Like same thing as like the title sequence after he's like sitting outside the hospital waiting in the wheelchair. It just kind of reminded me of that. But it, it's uh, basically yeah. 
she has to wait for somebody to, to pick her up now, and uh, they end up having somebody at the hospital who's on call that can do it. Next, we see Dom. It's still still sticking with just Dom, but she's in her apartment leading a very sad life. <laughs> we know that Dom was kind of depressed even before well, yeah. the events of the series and stuff. She's just, she always kind of had a pathetic life. Remember that episode where she was took about ten minutes just talking to her Amazon Alexa? Yeah, I remember that. Yeah, she, <laughs> she's always been yeah she, yeah she's always been withdrawn and kind of yeah. Her her life is her work. She doesn't really have much. She outside doesn't of have that. a yeah. She didn't have a life outside of the FBI. That's kind of what this episode's about, really. And and she didn't really have much of a life inside the FBI either, because it's not like yeah. she really socialized with her co-workers or anything. And her lack of a life is kind of what this whole episode's about, in a sense. Right. So she's she's leading the sad existence here. Her apartment is, like, barren. Well, Darlene comes she's to hijack. She's sitting talking right? to her Alexa, and she's, like, making a grilled cheese sandwich, like, sloppily making, with, like, just no expression on her face. Right. <laughs> Darlene pops in. She's like... We gotta get out of here now. Where's your underwear? Where's your socks? We gotta pack up. Dom's just like not playing ball at all. She's just like, no, I'm just gonna sit in a pool of my own despair. Leave me alone. Let me just eat my grilled cheese and talk to my Alexa as if it's my best friend. Yeah. (laughs) This pisses off Darlene so much she ends up just like throwing the Alexa and destroying it. She's like, this isn't a person, it's a robot that buys you paper towels. Yeah. (laughs) What was really funny, though, is that I have an Amazon Echo, an Alexa, downstairs that we got from our cable company. Like, at a certain point, they just gave us one. Mm -hmm. And there's a point where she asks, like, the Alexa to play, like, Faith Hill or something. And (laughs) just my Alexa started playing Faith Hill. (laughs) And we were like, god damn it. We're like, Alexa, stop, 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 stop. But... um, uh, yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. I've been using the A word this whole time. So anybody listening to this on speakers with an Amazon Echo in their house is having it pinging constantly. Oops. <laughs> sorry about that. <laughs> Same thing that happened to me in the show. But anyways, Dom is leading the sad life. Darlene's trying to get her out of there. She finally manages to get Darlene to go with her. But man, it's a, uh, or Dom to go with her. But man, it's a struggle. It's like probably a good like 10 minutes of Dom just refusing to leave her apartment. <laughs> but like I said, this is what this episode's about. This is kind of like the Dom episode. This is the episode that gives kind of a moment for, for Dom's character to adjust or adapt, I guess. So Darlene and Dom take off. They meet up with Elliot. This is like the two minutes or so that Elliot's in the show in this episode. <laughs> Elliot's looking at that thumb drive. He knows he has something else he has to do. Because of that, he can't go with Darlene as they had planned. And so right. he tells Darlene to kind of go go without him. And they have a little brief hug. They have a little cute moment where she asks him for advice for going on a road trip. And he's like, I've never been on a road trip. <laughs> and you just see, like, their lives, like, in the way that Dom, Dom doesn't have a life because she's just doesn't have a life. Like... Elliot and and Darlene haven't really lived that much of a life themselves, but it's because they're, you know, because of the tragedies of their lives. Right. They haven't really had a chance to do that. You know, they've always been in some situation or another that hasn't allowed them to, you know, experience normal things like going on a road trip. So they have their little goodbye. Dom can't get her, like, I think it's an orange crush or something. She's trying to get from a vending machine and she can't get. And she finally goes to the room they have and she opens it up and who's in there? It's Leon. Yeah. (laughs) <laughs> Leon. Uh, and she's, she's freaked out too because she's like, uh, aren't you Dark Army? Yeah, she's, she, she's like immediately thinking, oh shit, he's, he's there to kill me. And he's just making small talk. He's talking about three days of the Condor. <laughs> yeah. He's, he's talking about movies and shit. Yeah, he's talking about movies. <laughs> Remember when we first met this character, he was going on and on about Seinfeld. You know, <laughs> this is who this character is. So he's just talking about these movies, you know, and like making references and, you know, going like, you're an FBI agent and you haven't seen Three Days of the Condor? And, and you know, just kind of like going, oh, that's a shame. Why haven't you done that? And he's sitting there talking about that this whole time. She's just staring at him like, okay, when's he going to be done talking about pop culture and murder me? Like, when's it going to happen? What's going on here? He finally ends up telling her, like, oh no, I'm a, I'm a freelancer now. I don't, I'm, I'm here to help Elliot and Darlene. I'm not gonna do anything to you. 
Then Darlene joins them, and she, Darlene's like, oh, fuck, I forgot to tell you that he was there. <laughs> Which is the big thing to forget, you know? <laughs> so you know that guy that murdered a bunch of people right in front of you? And uh, supposedly works for the Dark Army? Yeah, he's in our hotel room. Yeah. <laughs> so Darlene... Dom and Leon are all, all now traveling to an airport that's like a, a state away, I think. They're going, they're driving through Connecticut, I believe they said. Leon had a whole thing about, was it, uh, what do you call them? RWAs, I think. Rich yeah, white assholes. Rich white assholes. They say like they're, he said they're the Dark Army's like biggest customers. Yeah, he said there's just Dark Army people everywhere there because yeah, he said, a bunch of rich yeah, white assholes. A bunch of white white assholes, so that makes that part of Connecticut like a Dark Army like country. <laughs> so he's he's driving them through there and he he's taking them we eventually find to the airport, but he has to make a pit stop. He 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 quotes Breakfast of Champions by Kurt Vonnegut and says he needs to steal a mirror, meaning he has to take a piss. And uh, he's again disheartened by the fact that Dom doesn't know that reference <laughs> and starts uh, going on about how people never read anymore. By but the, they by, stop. <laughs> by the way, if you notice something, the uh, remember the episode of Mr. Robot where it was like an 80s sitcom mm -hmm. and they and they mentioned the annual Alderson family road trip. <laughs> That was not real because yeah. because Darlene tells Dom in this episode that she's never been on a road trip before. Well, she told Elliot that oh, she that's... asked she asked Elliot. Oh, that's right. I mentioned she told that. Elliot. I mentioned that just earlier. Like, yeah, she her and Elliot talked, and she said that she asked for advice on a road trip, and he's like, I don't know, I've never taken one. Oh, that's right. Yeah, Elliot said that. Yeah, that's right. He was like, Yeah, I don't know, I've never taken one. Yeah, that's right. And they make this pit stop, and at this moment, we should also say that Elliot and Darlene, everything they talked about was that Darlene brought out her phone and said, you know, here, do the honors, and you, you can distribute it, and uh, he said, no, that should be you. And that ties into, now that they're at the pit stop, uh, Darlene and Dom and Leon, Leon's still relieving himself, and uh, Dom and Darlene... Darlene takes Dom and says, I, I want you to come over here. And she brings her over, and they're basically people watching. They're sitting on a bench and watching a bunch of people walk around at this rest stop. Yes. And Dom's like, hold on just a second. Or Darlene's like, hold on just a second. Let me do this. And she, like, does something on her phone. And Dom's like, what are you doing? What are you doing? She's like, you, you just can't stop breaking the law. Like, what's wrong with you? Oh, <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. Like, you're doing something yeah. illegal again? Yeah, you're doing something illegal. She's like, it's like you got fetish for breaking the law. <laughs> <laughs> So she's like, she's like, just hold on. And, and Dom's like, I can't believe you. But, and Darlene's like, just shut up and watch. And you just see everybody start getting alerts. What she's done is she's dist redistributed all of the money they stole from the Deus group, basically to everybody's e-coin wallets. So everybody with an e-coin wallet now has has some large sum of money, and they've made it out to be it is a large sum of money that each person has acquired. Because at first it's like divided up among that many people, maybe it's like a really small amount. But Dom seemed kind of a little bit shocked at, because that was go that everybody was getting that amount of money. Um, but I don't think, unless I missed it, that they showed us how much money they were each getting. No, it didn't. But we know that the it's, grand it's... sum is somewhere in the like probably trillions because that was what yeah. the thing that Mr. Robot we, we showed to we uh, Vera. Know, we, we know they didn't show exactly where everybody gets, but they implied that it's enough to be basically a life changing amount. Yeah, for everybody. For everybody. Yeah. So it's a, a huge amount of money. They distributed that. Everybody just seems to, is like lighting up and happy. And Darlene is showing, showing this to Dom. It's like, look at this. She says, uh, we Robin Hooded those motherfuckers. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and then Darlene just starts screaming. She's uh, like, Woo! Dom starts going, but that, that isn't justice. You know, you're, you're supposed to play by the system. You know, that's why we, that's why we have laws and that's why we, and then Darlene, Darlene is just like, no, the laws are set up to benefit these, these rich assholes. These day group assholes made the laws to benefit them, you know? Yeah. That was our one week, our, our weakness was trusting the system. Yeah. So Darlene's like cheering out and everybody's looking at her, but everybody's smiling because everybody's got this money and it's a life changing moment for all of these people. And even Dom is kind of a little bit swept up in it after, yeah. you know, a lot of reluctance at first. Yeah, after a lot of reluctance, yeah. Dom is very, very reluctant to get on board with the program. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> they continue with their trip. They end up at like an airport. Oh yeah, this is great. This is the craziest yes. encounter. This Dom's like in a gift shop and she walks by like a rack of books and just standing right there next to a cutout of himself. Is the author of those books. <laughs> Irving. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> another member of the Dark Army. Another, yeah, Irving from the, and remember, this is like Dark Army cameo. I remember episode. at the beginning of seasons, people were, people were asking where Irving was and if we were going to see Irving again. Well, here he is. <laughs> <laughs> he finally finished his novel. Oh, yeah, he finally He's on a book it. tour. He's on a book tour. His novel is apparently doing great. So he's apparently a successful novelist now. And he's like, he's like, oh, Dom, great to see you. How you doing? You know, he's making like chit chat with her. And she's just like frozen with like fear. You know, she's like, holy shit, you know? And he's like making this chit chat. And then finally Dom comes out with it. It's like, it's, you killed all you, those people. All and he's those like, people. oh yeah, that was fun. Yeah. Yeah. He's like, oh yeah, that was, <laughs> no, 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 no. What he said was because she, she said you killed, but then she said, so I watch, I watch you like kill my boss right in front of me with an axe. And then he said, oh yeah, that was fun. <laughs> 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 and then Irving drops a bomb that uh, D- that Dom doesn't see coming because Irving then says, "Oh yeah, no, the Dark Army doesn't care about you anymore. They're not they're not coming after you because they don't care." He notices Darlene, and he's like, "Oh yeah, what what she did was bad." Yeah, she. Did. But they're not after her either. They got yeah. the other priorities. They got other priorities now, apparently. Yeah, which makes you wonder what those are. <laughs> yeah, it makes you wonder what the hell is going on in Dark Army. This is, I think, cementing that there's a line between the Dark Army and Deus. Yeah. They're not the same thing. Dark Army was working for Deus. Yeah, they were working for Deus. Which makes me wonder, is is White Rose still in control, or is something else happening? We don't know. Or is either. White Rose dead? We don't, <laughs> we don't even dead, know if White Rose is alive. We, we don't know. These are mysteries for next week, because it's not answered this week. Instead, Dom goes back to Darlene with the news that Irving told her. And Dom starts getting a cold feed about, you know, flying overseas with uh, Darlene. To now Budapest, that, yeah. To, to Budapest, now that she knows uh, Dark Army's no longer after her. This is where the episode gets weird for a Mr. Robot episode. It does. It, it, it just becomes like a 80s romantic hijinks like movie. Oh god, they even you know? like, uh... Even the music, yeah. <laughs> even the music, even, yeah. Even though the the music's not an eighties tune, it's just Carly Rae Jepsen. It's no, but it, yeah. <laughs> but it's it's not even necessarily an eighties theme it, thing. It's it it's like evokes a romantic that, movie thing. Yeah. yeah, it evokes like yeah, like a romance movie, like a tip. Yeah, this is where it turns into like uh, this weird tropey romance movie. And it's like yeah. hmm, okay, <laughs> like a, with like, a little twist on it, because basically what happens is. Like, like, it's an S- SML is having a lot of fun playing with a uh, form in the season. Yeah. So, yeah. Basically, what happens is Dom says, like, we don't, Dark Army's not after us anymore. I, I don't want to go to Budapest. Why are we going to Budapest? And Darlene's saying, well, we don't have to go to Budapest just because we're running away from the Dark Army. We, we have go. tickets to Budapest. Yeah, we could go. Let's just, just go to Budapest. We could go just to go and get away from our lives, you know? Yeah, you know, it's something Dom actually needs. Dom talked about, like, not having a real night's sleep in years. You yeah, know? yeah. And Dom's like, you know, she's, she doesn't want to do this. She wants to go back to her basically non-life. Yeah, and she's like, you know, Darlene's like, well, I don't want to go alone. Darlene has... I have panic it, attacks. It, yeah, it's mentioned uh, because it's mentioned earlier that she has panic attacks. It's mentioned earlier in the series. Yeah. And yeah, this is where that comes... Yeah, she So she tells Dom that, you know, she can't go by herself because she has panic attacks. And Dom is just like, well, good luck. <laughs> <laughs> well, basically says, like, you can handle it. You're you've grown. You can do this or something. And then Dom goes off to go back to the rat race, which Dom is like not a good judge of what other people can handle. But <laughs> yeah. Darlene, you know, now they're separated on this. Dom is, like, walking away to leave the terminal. Darlene starts to have a panic attack. She goes into the bathroom, and she's Dom just having turns a around panic attack. Dom changes her mind and turns around. She reaches the point in the airport where you can't go back. Yeah. Like, so if she crosses this line, she can't return. And she stops right before that line and then changes her mind and runs back 
to get on the plane. But Darlene's having a panic attack in the bathroom, meanwhile, and Dom just goes, runs right by Darlene without, without noticing her. And, gets on, boards the plane, and then you see Darlene in the bathroom and you hear them saying, last chance for the boarding on the plane, and she's having this panic attack and she starts to recover from it, and there's a woman in the bathroom with her saying, are you okay? Isn't that your flight? Should I go get somebody to help you? And Darlene's like, no, it's okay, I'm fine. I'm I'm fine. And, and the growth moment there is it's saying that she's overcome her panic. Me- meanwhile, Dom is on this flight. And by herself, now. by herself now, <laughs> and and Darlene's basically saying, "Oh, I'm not getting on that flight. I don't care yeah, about it anymore." She doesn't care about it anymore because it was really going with Dom that she wanted to do, and now <laughs> she thinks Dom's gone, but Dom's on the plane going, "Where's Darlene?" <laughs> and Darlene, you're you're really screwed, Dom over. Damn. <laughs> and Dom tries to get up and go, but then realizes she can't, really. Right. And so now she's on the plane on her way to Budapest, and Darlene's not getting on the plane. But the important part is here is then Dom goes to sleep. So it's implied like she finally let go. It's what she needed was to uh, to have some time alone. And that's it. That's the episode. There you go. So very, very strange, light-hearted, romantic comedy ended <laughs> episode of Mr. Robot. Just I messaged you earlier today when I was reminding you. I'm like, I'm like, oh, remember we got the podcast tonight? Those, those two episodes. I said, I'm watching the episode now. Does not feel like a Mr. Robot episode. And you were just like, yep. Yeah, I was like, yep. <laughs> it's very strange for Mr. Robot. But as you said, Sam Esmail is playing with form. He's, he's experimenting, which is cool in its own right. And it looks like the next episode is going to start taking us into what Elliot's been doing this whole time. I, I wouldn't be surprised if this is basically the last we see of Darlene or Dom or Irving or Leon. <laughs> I think that's pretty much the last of them. And that's what this episode was. It was kind of a goodbye for those characters. Yeah, it was a goodbye for us. Yeah, like, this is definitely the end of Dom's character arc. I don't think we're mm-hmm. going to see her again. Uh, this is, I think, I think. Unless the, there's some, like, ep- crazy epilogue or yeah, something. Yeah, unless there's an epilogue. But I think, yeah, I think the point of this episode was this is the ending of Dom's storyline, but it's not the ending of Darlene's storyline. I don't know. I, that, I think this might be the last we see of Darlene's character, too. Mm, well, she's still, be, she's still hanging behind. Like, I don't know. That's, that's true. But is she going to make it back in time for what, you know, she's like all the way across state. She's in a different state, but, you know. <laughs> but, yeah, but but it's definitely Dom because Dom's going to Budapest and we're not following yeah. her to Budapest, so. <laughs> uh, but, she's back an hour later in real time. She's like, I caught the return. Yeah. Point. Like, <laughs> yeah. wait a minute, that makes no sense. Yeah, that makes no sense. Uh <laughs> But yeah, it's just kind of a weird episode. Yeah. I'm glad that we ended up, you know, because of my work schedule, we ended up having to delay the podcast like halfway yeah, into so. the next week. So we didn't skip a week, but we went like halfway in the middle and merged the two to, to talk about two episodes instead of one. And I'm glad we did because it'd be weird to talk about this one episode in its own podcast because it's just so different from typical Mr. Robot, you know. But that's it. Like I said, three episodes left, or basic two, depending on how you look at it, I guess. <laughs> three hours of Mr. Robot left total, not just in the season, this is the series. And that's it. Are you excited for what's coming up? I'm excited, yeah. I'm excited. I'm excited to see what, because I'm pretty sure next week we're going to catch up with Elliot and see what he's doing, where he, you know, what he's doing. Yeah, we're going to maybe finally see uh, White white uh, White Rose's machine. Yeah. What that's all about. White Rose is going to use it to reboot the entire series. Yeah. It's just going to be like a crazy time travel episode. Yeah. It's going to be like, oh, no, this happened. <laughs> That'd be funny. That'd be funny. <laughs> it'd be funny, but it'd be kind of a slap in the face. Yeah, it would too. be. It would, it would suck. <laughs> Don't do that. <laughs> Don't do that, Sam Esmail. I think it's too late whether he did it or not. <laughs> well, it's not because he, tell could, him otherwise. he could use White Rose's machine to go back in time. <laughs> oh, yeah, he just uses White Rose's machine to remake the last episodes. Yes. I think I, I, think I heard that uh, two guys named Dan and Dave were seen stealing the machine. <laughs> they heard it went back in time that, and they, you could correct an episode, bad episodes. <laughs> but uh, yeah, that's it for this week's discussion. So here's what's coming up uh, for the rest of the month. On Friday, December 13th, The Expanse returns. This It's going to be on Amazon Prime now. 
Marvel's Runaways returns on Hulu. They're and they're doing a crossover with Cloak and Dagger as well this season, which was uh, recently canceled. But the actors are going to be in Marvel's Runaways. So if you liked Cloak and Dagger or Marvel's Runaways, you got both of them. Yeah. On Wednesday, December eighteenth, soundtrack comes to Netflix and Wisting to Sundance Now. On Thursday, December nineteenth, A Christmas Carol. It's it's a movie on FX. You know the the famous Christmas Carol story. But this one is being done by Stephen Knight, who is the creator of Peaky Blinders. And it's supposed to be like a darker take on A Christmas Carol. Yeah, it looks interesting. Yeah, that'll be interesting. I saw people commenting, like, pe- like people who, like, know nothing about Stephen the Knight's, like, work, going, Ew, ew, AG Christmas Carol. Didn't they think of anything else? I'm like, <laughs> you, don't, you don't know what you're talking about. Watch Peaky Blinders and we'll watch uh, Yeah, watch Peaky Blinders or Taboo. And shut the fuck up. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so it'll be interesting to see what, what he does with it, what his take on a Christmas carol is going to be. Yeah, it'll be. I'm I think, I think it's actually going to end up being less just being edgy and more just kind of like true to the era that the story's supposed to take place in. Right, right. Because that era of London wasn't exactly peachy keen. Yeah, because you know? his stuff is about <laughs> being edgy in the first place. Yeah. So it'll be that'll be pretty cool to see. Also uh on Netflix Twice Upon a Time and Ultraviolet debut on that day. Okay. Then Friday December 20th 2019 The Witcher comes to Netflix. So this is a big one. People are already making lots of comparisons to Game of Thrones. People have seen it. They've been talking about the fight choreography, saying it's really good. It's got Henry Cavill in it. People have been praising his performance. The first early reviews haven't really given us any information on, like, story or depiction of the show itself, but just talking about mostly the fighting scenes and Henry Cavill. And they've been pretty glowing so far. So, yeah, it'll be interesting to see. I know there's a lot of controversy with it, too, because there's a lot of uh, people that aren't happy about the kind of, I guess, apparent feminist agenda of the showrunner that some people are worried about. Plus, you also have the people that kind of just know The Witcher from the games and are disregarding that the games take place after the books and that this is an adaptation of the books. Yeah, this is not an adaptation. So, there's yeah, there's going to be a lot of people coming in expecting the games, and it's that's not what you're going to get. So, I don't know if I should settle back on Friday, December 20th, turn on Netflix and eat some popcorn and, and watch The Witcher, or if I should just load up a Twitter feed on December 20th and watch that while eating popcorn. <laughs> <laughs> I say one of them is guaranteed to be a good show. I just don't know which one. Tuesday, December 24th, Christmas Eve, Lost in Space returns on Netflix. I know you're super excited. You came away very positive after we watched the first season on the show. Oh yeah, I sure did. There's also the anime Carol and Tuesday coming to Netflix, Crash Landing on You, and Terrace House, Tokyo, 2019 to 2020, all coming to Netflix on December 24th. On Wednesday, December 25th, Christmas, Call the Midwife is having its annual Christmas special on PBS. On Thursday, December 26th, Fast and Furious Spy Racers, a new, like, animated series set in the Fast and Furious universe, is airing on Netflix, as well as La Bazaar de la Charité and You, which is that serial killer show that I believe was on, started on Lifetime and then became a Netflix original somehow. Oh, yeah, yeah, it did. Yeah, I don't care about that show. That's uh, Sarah Gamble, isn't it, for the uh, showrunner for The Magicians that does that? Sarah Gamble, yeah, that's You, yeah. Then on Friday, December 27th, The Gift comes to Netflix. On Sunday, December 29th, Dare Me comes to USA. This is, USA's been advertising this heavily during Mr. Robot. This show, they, they have two shows coming. They have one coming from Sam, uh, Sam Esmel that's like a, a show about a woman coming to a town trying to avenge her sister. And then they have this show, which is about like cheerleaders doing evil shit, I guess. So they, they're kind of like, USA is trying to get back on the kind of dark bandwagon now that Mr. Robot's ending. They don't have any shows like that, like dark, satirical, kind of interesting shows like that. So they're, they're starting to kind of push in that direction. And Dare Me is one of the ones that's doing that. We'll have to see if it's any good. Monday, December 30th, The Disastrous Life of Psyche K Reawakened, an anime series. On Tuesday, December 31st, that's uh, New Year's Eve, The Neighbor comes to Netflix, as does Yangtze Palace Princess Adventures. 
Mm-hmm. So that's it. As I mentioned, next week we're going to be talking about Mr. Robot again. Mm-hmm. Till then, you can reach me on Twitter. I'm at Tyson Gifford. You can reach Will. He is at Voxel Hero. You can check out our Facebook page and our YouTube channel, as well as our site, thetotalscreen.com. You can subscribe to the podcast through any major podcast client, like iTunes or Pocket Cast. And the entire backlog of our podcast is available on our YouTube channel, so check that out. Thank you, everybody, for listening. Good night. Good night. If you would like to reach out to us and make a comment, send an email to contact at thetotalscreen.com. Stay tuned to The Total Screen for the very best 